Now, welcome back to Social Media Journalism. This is Robert Quigley, the uh, professor for this course, and I'm going to predict the future in this module, so prepare yourselves. Now, is Facebook too big to fail? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's possible it is, uh, but things have changed over time. We went from Friendster to MySpace, and these are pretty cyclical. However, Facebook is really massive. And we are really invested in Facebook. We've put a lot of photos on there, a lot of content on there. We've made a lot of friends and connections with those uh, old high school classmates and things like that. It'd be kind of a surprise to me if it completely went away. Uh, however, uh, studies are showing that uh, the teenagers these days, kids these days, aren't using it quite as much as they, uh, as previous generation did. Uh, I think uh, mom and grandma being on there and being all up in their business is something to do with that. Uh, they could carry that habit on of not using Facebook into uh, later life, so we'll just have to see. What about Pinterest? Is this just a fad that's out there for people who are obsessive about finding interesting things and pinning them for their friends to see or just for their own organization and recipes and fashion and things like that? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, I, I think it's a really interesting platform, and I really like it a lot. And so I think that uh, it's got a its own little corner of the internet, its own little corner of a uh, social uh, that it may, it may just stick around for a while. What about Twitter? Is Twitter too big to fail? Uh, no, it, it could fail. Something better could come along. Something that everybody joins up on and wants to use that uh, works much like Twitter, but maybe uh, just does a little bit better. Uh, so I don't want to say never. However, it's pretty ingrained now, and uh, it's being used for so many things in the media that it'd be kind of a surprise for it to go away unless something really great came along. Now, what about poor Google Plus? And I know I've been kind of hard on them in the past, but uh, you know, it does have a lot of users. Of course, I don't know exactly how they're measuring those users because the numbers they show are like as high as Twitter's. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of uh, the usage stats come from people who just upload YouTube videos or even have a Gmail account. Uh, but Google is uh, just uh, hell-bent on making this work, so it's uh, integrating it more with all of its services, including YouTube, and also its Android uh, uh, handset. So I don't think it's completely gone or it's ever going to completely go away uh, as long as Google keeps uh, pushing behind it. So where's it all going? Well, wearables maybe, right? I mean, you all know about Google Glass. They're kind of ugly, but, uh, you know, it's getting a lot of press. Uh, what about smartwatches or even clothing that can interact? Basically, how does that affect social, though, is that people can use all of these different ways to gather content and share it with their friends. And as long as they're doing that, there should be journalists out there looking to take advantage of that in not a negative way, but take advantage of it in a positive way to tell a better story. So how can we uh, how can we do that? Well, we just need to stay on top of the trends and what's coming up. All right. So here's my main predictions here. Social's here to stay. I don't think that we're going to go backward and have it where you can't interact with each other on the web. In fact, they'll just keep going up. This is going to be a growing field for quite a time to come. Uh, mobile must be done well for you to actually have a successful social platform, though. Uh, as we all know, we're, we're completely connected to our mobile phones. It's almost like being a, uh, an Android in some ways because we have a uh, not Android the platform, but Android the robot. It's like having an extension of your body uh, where you can uh, constantly be in contact with friends and find out information and you know play games once in a while. Uh, we're pretty invested in all the uh, social services that are out there. We're posting all our photos and videos. We're uh, posting our restaurant reviews. We rely on it for so much that uh, I think that they've entrenched themselves into our lives. And so even if a platform were to go away, even if Facebook or Twitter were to die or Pinterest were to go away, uh, the idea as a journalist is that you are uh, gathering a good community of people who will follow you to the next big thing. So uh, if uh, Twitter were to go away in the month, uh, you know, we'd have some warning. We would know something new is coming and we just tell everybody, hey, we're going to be there now. Come follow us over there. Uh, I want you to be the journalist who experiments, who doesn't say, I'm going to wait and see if this actually becomes an established you know, platform before I'll waste any time on it. Uh, it's not wasting time if you're experimenting. It's not wasting time if you're trying new things and seeing if you can make them work. Uh, you need to be that employee who finds that next big thing, who uh, knows it's coming and makes it happen. When I started experimenting with the Statesman on Twitter uh, back in 2008, uh, Twitter was by no means established. 
and uh, people saw it as a fad that would go away quickly. And a lot of uh, journalists kind of waited on the sidelines to see if this thing would become a bigger deal before they wanted to, quote, waste time on it. I, I dove in head first and, and got lucky. You know, it did turn out to be a big deal. And uh, that's part of why I got my job here. So I totally uh, strongly suggest that you uh, uh, just push ahead on things. Be that person who gets it in your newsroom or your organization. Well, that's it. I know you're going to miss these, uh, these quizzes, but go ahead and take the last one, and uh, I'll see you uh, in other parts of the class.